Well, good morning, Trucker Todd here, and time for another video. Last week, I guess, no, I guess it was earlier this week. Man, my brain is scrum. I always do these before I get caffeine. I got to start doing these after I've had a little caffeine. Anyway, earlier this week, we uh, did a video where I talked about dark transit, how they pay, what they pay, when they pay, and uh, anytime I do a pay video, somebody always attacks me. I'm dumb. I'm getting ripped off. I'm not experienced enough to know better. And uh, so in this video, I decided why not compare what he's doing to what I'm doing. Let's see who has the better deal. Um, I'm sure even after this video, he'll still think he has the best deal. And after this video, I'll probably still think I've got the best deal. So this one runs a little long. I'm sorry for that. There's a lot of ground to cover, but um, I think it'll be worth it for you guys. There's a lot of information for you, even if you're looking at a company outside of DART. Um, hopefully there's some information here that will help you. I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time rambling. Let's jump right in. Well, good morning, Trucker Todd here, and time for another video. This is actually part two of another video I did recently where I discussed how Dart Transit pays. And uh, as always, anytime I do an income video, say what I make, how a company pays, something like that, there's uh, always a guy that comes out and says, ah, oh, you're, you're not understanding, you're dumb, you're... Uh, you're getting ripped off. You're getting taken advantage of. You should do what I'm doing. This is a lot better. And so in this video, I'm going to take a look at what he's doing. What's better about what he's doing? What's worse about what he's doing? And we're going to compare the two. This guy and I went back and forth on YouTube and then in emails for quite a while. And eventually he conceded. Um, he did everything from insult my experience to my intelligence. Um, and what I'll tell you is uh, a lot of times people underestimate me. And uh, I know I can come across as having a big ego. We could debate whether I do or whether I don't. But uh, either way, I'm right. All right, let's not waste any time. I'm not going to sit here and beat my own drum. Here we go. Okay, jumping right in. Let's make sure that everybody is still subscribed. YouTube has been messing with people's YouTube accounts and uh, unsubscribing people. Make sure you're still subscribed. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Uh, when you click that subscription thing, uh, wait for the bell, click the bell, and hit all so that you receive a notification when I put out a new video. It's free to do. It doesn't cost you anything. And it just sends you a little notification that, hey, there's a new video out. Also, if you're interested in learning more about working at Dark Transit, the recruiter that I used, his information is down below. Call him. My driver number's down there. Tell him that you watched my videos. Give him that driver number. It helps me out, and it'll help you out because it'll get you with a good recruiter that knows what he's doing. He'll answer your questions. He'll get you through orientation with... Uh, with very few or no speed bumps. Also, if you are uh, the type that you're ready to jump now, you don't need to talk to anybody, there's a link there where you can apply with uh, Dark Transit directly. And uh, so I encourage you to do that. Also, feel free to leave a comment. My email's down there if you want to email me. Uh, love hearing from you guys. Even those of you that don't always agree with me, that's okay. All right, let's jump into this. So, first thing he says, he's criticizing me for uh, making fifteen to eighteen hundred a week. Says uh, I should be making a lot more. Far be it from me to argue with that. I agree. I think I should be making more. I think you should be making more. We all should be making more. Uh, he says. Uh, he thinks I'm dumb for paying over 2000 a month for a 2019 KW. Um, now, let's keep in mind, 
I did this with no money down. Is it possible you could go to a KW dealership and get a truck just like this for $2,100 a month like I'm in? Yes, but you're going to put a substantial amount of money down. And let me explain this to you. When I sold cars, I ran into this a lot too. Uh, let's take a $30,000 car. Let's say you finance it for five years. That's 60 months. 60 divided by 30,000 is $500. Plus you've got interest on top of that. So when you go to your car dealership and say, hey, I want a car for 200 a month. They can get it to 200 a month, but you're gonna have to put some money down. It's simple math. So can you get a KW 2100 a month at a dealership? You betcha. But you're gonna put several thousand dollars down probably fifteen twenty thousand dollars down but uh i mean trucks have got expensive since they put all this emissions junk on it we could argue if that's good or bad right or wrong but that's not the point of this video um i've got two pages worth of notes here and i don't want to make this a long video so i'm going to kind of keep going but i will tell you for no money down i'm not aware of anywhere else that you can get a truck for 2100 a month a 2019 kw just i'm not aware of any company offering that i'm not any aware of any dealership offering that with no money down all right he says that i'll never own this truck well <laughs> uh, he doesn't know much about dark transit because it's very common to meet um, drivers that have paid their trucks off here it's not a shock um, I've only been back a couple of weeks, but when I was here in 2014, you were more likely to find drivers that had paid off three or four trucks, been here 10 or 15 years. Now I know COVID's created some turnover. I don't know if those guys are still here, but uh, the never own your truck thing is common at a lot of companies. I get that, but it's not common here at DART. You can pay the truck off. They actually want you to pay the truck off. Sorry, I had an alarm come through. They actually want you to pay the truck off. Next thing he says, I never get to go home. I just left the house. I was there for four or five days. Why was I there only four or five days? That's how long I requested to be off. So I go home anytime I want to. I don't, uh, he's obviously new to the channel, doesn't know much about me. But uh, you hear a lot of drivers when they're bad mouth and lease purchase say that okay let's talk about something else this is something i've hit in a few other videos i saw another youtuber talk about it recently and it makes perfect sense there's so much snobbery in trucking and what i mean by that is guys will say well you're not an owner operator if you're in a lease purchase you're only an owner operator if you're bank financed you're not an owner operator unless your truck's paid off and the title's in your hand. And uh, I wanna clarify that a little. This is the only business industry I'm aware of that has that mentality. Odds are, if you go eat at a restaurant today, they lease the building, they don't own it. Oftentimes they lease the kitchen equipment, they don't own it. Your company that you're working for right now probably leases the building they're in or some of their equipment. Leasing is a very common practice in business. How many of you walk into your favorite restaurant, your favorite business, and ask them how their equipment's financed, how their building's financed? And if they say, oh, we're leasing the building, you say, oh, well, you're not a real restaurant, I'm leaving. Excuse me. <coughs> also, let's talk about this automatic versus manual transmission thing i've heard it said if you're driving an automatic you're not a real truck driver now i can drive either one i, I took my driving test at dart on a manual even though my truck now is an automatic do we say that to car drivers hey if your car doesn't have a stick in it you don't have a real driver's license but somehow in trucking we feel like we need to elevate ourselves above others and I don't know why that is, if it's a low self-esteem or what. But we're all out here trying to make a living, doing the best we can. And uh, we need to quit trying to put others down and elevate ourselves. 
Uh, we need to uh, have more common courtesy to each other and try to be nicer to each other. So let's jump back into this. Next, he says, I need a company job where I'm home every weekend, and then I'll make 1500 a week just like I'm making now. Well, that also is a guy that has not studied my background. I actually did that for over two years uh, for a company, White Transportation, except I was home every other day. And uh, I didn't make 1500 a week. I made 46 cents a mile. Um, it wasn't a bad job. They've contacted me about going to back to work there. Um, I'm not interested at this time. I'm happy at DART. Uh, should this ever go south, it might be something I'd consider in the future. But um, I actually like what I'm doing now because I've got freedom. I go home when I want to. I stay when I want to. I turn down loads I don't want to do, uh, things like that. So, uh, if I obviously with 24 years experience, if I wanted a company job, uh, those would be available to me. Now, that was another thing. He questions my experience uh, in his first email to me. I don't know how long you've been driving. So I've been driving 24 years. How long you've been driving? Hmm, 14. So. Uh, that's again going back to where certain people think they have superiority over other people and we're all just taking freight from point a to point b but anyway i don't want to harp on that too much longer like i said we got a lot to get through and i don't want this to be a long long video i know you guys it's friday you're busy you just want to watch this get the facts and move on all right here we go he says i can go to a dealership and buy a truck for eleven to twelve hundred a month, and I can make four to five thousand a week. That's true, but you get what you pay for. He's driving a much older, retired Walmart truck, and I'm driving a 2019 Kenworth T680. And uh, again, you can go to a dealership and buy. Um, there's even some for bad credit. There's companies you put thirty five hundred, five thousand down. Uh, you can buy a truck. What's the difference between that and a lease? The biggest difference is if I have something happen in my life and I need to walk away from this, it's a whole lot easier to get out of a lease than it is a purchase with a lot less damage to your credit. Also, I'm not upfronting any money, so I lose less if I walk away than what he does. Does he have some benefits to his deal? Sure. Depending on the lease company, he might or might not be able to move it to other companies more freely. Um, in, all, in all likelihood, if, if Dart and I went sideways, it would be very hard, if not impossible, to move this truck to another company unless I could arrange outside financing. So, like I said, I can see both sides of it, and I don't understand why we have to beat each other up like this. But, let's keep going. I uh, also want to mention on that subject, uh, he ends up showing me his settlements at some point. We're going to get to that later in the video. He's not making anywhere near four to 5000 a week. And uh, he talks like he's an expert and been doing it a while when the settlement he sent me was his very first from the company. He just started there about a week and a half ago. And so uh, anyway, I, I'm really... This guy really frustrated me, and I, I want to share this with you because there's a lot of people out there with this attitude. He says the average rate is three to four dollars a mile on drive around freight, and I've heard uh, there used to be a guy on YouTube that was a friend of mine for a while, and he kind of went sideways. There's a lot of drama there. I'm going to talk about that probably next week about um, some of the heartaches of trucking. Some of the heartaches I have in this YouTube channel. Um, and I'm probably going to lose a couple of friends when that video comes out. And from the previous company I've worked with. And that's okay, I understand. But uh, the national average on, uh, and it fluctuates a little, on drive-in freight right now is $1.70 to $1.75 a mile. I actually am on two different load boards. And I actually... Um, I'm more connected than you guys realize. I can't share everything, but I talked to some of the big wigs at companies. I know what they're pay, what they're getting for freight right now, 
and I think you'd find a dollar seventy to a dollar seventy five a mile to be really accurate. Now you're gonna say, well Todd, you're only getting a dollar five a mile. No. You add another sixteen cents or so a mile to uh, that for the fuel surcharge. That puts me at uh one twenty one, something like that, one twenty three depending on the week. And if uh, I'm not saying this is Dart's deal, I'm just using the averages. Let's say Dart's getting a dollar seventy a mile average and I'm getting a dollar twenty one, they're making forty nine cents a mile off of me. Now, to Joe Sixpack, that sounds like a lot of money, but the company has to, uh, they have to have a safety department. They have, have compliance with DOT. They have to have buildings. They have to have phones. They have to have computers. 50 cents a mile is not a killing. Trucking companies wouldn't be going under the way they are if, uh, if 50 cents a mile was a killing. So granted, I agree that we as drivers need to be making more money but i also agree the companies need to be making more money um, stuff like free shipping with amazon and things like that are what's driving rates down and rates in general need to go up for everybody for drivers and companies i'm not bashing big business i i see their side of it they're they have insurances on top of the insurances we have and uh they have grounds maintenance. They have all kinds of stuff that they have to do. They have to have salesmen that go out and get these loads. They have to have customer support reps that answer the calls when things go sideways. So these companies have their hands full. And let's not all just jump on them and beat them up. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, I mentioned to him, uh, and he sends me his load board deals. We're going to get into that in a minute too. I mentioned to him he's making roughly twice the national average if he's getting three to four dollars a mile. He recommend I look at a deal called Load Board 123 and asked me, kind of cocky, which load boards can you see? I said, well, I can see JB Hunt Carrier 360 and I can see CH Robinson. Probably two of the larger load boards in the country. Definitely in the top five. I've never heard of Load Board 123. I would venture to say they're not in the top five. And uh, so he uh, he sends me some loads, and we're going to talk about those in a minute, but let's keep going. He says what I'm doing wrong, the reason he's getting twice the national average, is that he's doing loads between 70 miles and 129 miles, and they're paying between 600 and 1300 and that he stays in his backyard. He's home all the time, whereas I'm out here running the road. Well, the problem with that, that one example settlement he sent me, I asked for eight, he sent me one. Uh, he doesn't have any loads like that on there, not a one. And so he does have some good paying freight, and we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm still waiting for his last eight settlements. I got one, and it may be because he uh, just started with this company. That's fine. Send me the previous seven from your last company where you were making four to 5,000 a week take home, not gross, take home, and you were getting three to $4 a mile. The math doesn't add up. So he sends me three cherry picked loads off of a quasi load board. It wasn't, it didn't, wasn't a real load board. And uh, they were loads that picked up in either Hanover, Pennsylvania or Car Carlisle, Pennsylvania. One of them went to Pennsylvania. It was 70 miles, 857 a mile, paid 600 bucks. One of them went to Maryland, 101 miles, 624 a mile, paid uh, $630. And then the one going to New York paid two or was 229 miles, paid 524 a mile or 1200 bucks. Now, all of you that's been to the Northeast know there's tolls, there's limited parking. Diesel's more expensive. So while these rates are great, your costs are also great. Also, the big elephant in the room that he never mentions is deadhead. We're going to tackle deadhead in this video, and I'm going to show you what he actually did. So let's do that right now. Let's not waste any more time. I guess out of orientation, he went to from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Connolly, Georgia. It's 134 miles. They paid him 50 bucks, which is... Uh, what would that be about 20 something cents a mile something like that 
Then, from Conley, Georgia, he, he deadheaded to Moundsville, Virginia. 659 miles. Uh, well, I'm not sure on this one if it was deadhead or driving. He went 657 or 659 miles. They paid him 150, and that worked out to 22.7 cents a mile. Now, right here, we're at 790 something miles, and he's made 200 bucks. So he's at about 40 cents a mile, I guess you'd say. Uh, then from Moundsville, West Virginia, or I guess that was loaded at the 22.7 cents a mile, 659 miles. Then from Moundsville, West Virginia to Crossville, Tennessee, he deadheaded 500 miles. He got no pay. Now see, these great rates are fine, but you've got to figure your deadhead in there to know your actual cost per mile. Then from Crossville, Tennessee, he took a load to Gray Court, South Carolina, 266 miles, thousand bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's okay. But then he deadheaded from Gray Court, South Carolina to Shelby, North Carolina, which is 70 miles at no money. And then he went from Shelby, North Carolina to Manchester, Tennessee, 335 miles, 1150. Again, another good paying load. Not bad. Deadhead, Manchester, Tennessee to Huntsville, Alabama, 80 miles, no pay. Huntsville, Alabama to Duncan, South Carolina, 329 miles, 1050. Again, not bad. Deadhead, Duncan, South Carolina to Conover, North Carolina, 95 miles, no pay. Conover, North Carolina to Columbus, Georgia, 361 miles, 1059. Now, there's a lot of loads here that are having around $275, $3 a mile. That's not bad. Um, I don't know what the catches are there, if they were multi-stop loads or if uh, what the setup was there. I'm just going off the numbers he gave me. His total gross revenue for the week was $44.59. His brokerage company takes 10% of that, leaving him roughly $4,000. Now, and I'm just rounding numbers off here. He had 2,829 miles for the week at $1.41 a mile. I'm figuring the deadhead in there is what that works out to. He, uh, remember, this is the guy that said, I'm making four to 5,000 a week. Well, his settlement showed $2,028.93, roughly half what he said he's making. He said, oh, but they charged me for two truck payments that were somebody else's. You got to add $1,090 back in. I said, all right. Add it in. Puts him at 3200 a week. But wait, there's more. <laughs> this guy, the way he gets to this number, and I can get to that number, he's not counting his truck payment in here. He's not counting a lot of his fixed expenses in here. He's doing what we call total gross revenue before anything comes out. So if I take him at his word on everything, he's at 3200 a week before his truck payment comes out, before any of his insurances come out, or most of his insurances, he had a couple of them on there. So he's making $2,100, $2,200 a week, which is still more than me. But wait, there's more. This guy has not got a maintenance account, so he's not taking any money out for maintenance. So in mine, I'm taking out $0.07 cents a mile. We're comparing apples and oranges here. I'm comparing in my dart truck with all my expenses taken out. This is what actually goes in the bank. He's doing before his expenses come out. So he's actually at best, most optimistically making the same money as me. But wait, there's more. When it comes time for those repairs, I'm with a larger company that will have uh, buying power. I'll get better discounts, cheaper parts, cheaper labor, and uh, expedited service. A prime example of that was after my first load when I had fifth wheel problems. You might remember Dart got involved and uh, they got Packar involved. A lot of people, a lot of higher ups was involved in that. Had I been an independent with my own truck, 
Do you think I'd have still got that same level of care? No. These trucking companies, when you're in a lease, they've got skin in the game too. They want you to do well. They want you to be successful. So they're going to help you and make sure you are. Um, if it's offering you advice, if it's uh, talking to a shop on your behalf, they want you to do well. And so that's why I recommend companies like this. And hey, if you're not sure, if you think, uh, oh, that old trucker Todd, he's full of baloney. Come on as a company driver. Try it out. You know, I, uh, I talked to a guy the other day. He was a company driver for DART for three years. And he said, uh, I just wanted a little more freedom. So I leased a truck a couple of weeks ago. I said, how do you like it? Oh, I love it. But he uh, he was familiar with the system. But when you're a company driver, they tell you where to fuel and what route to take and all that. When you're leased, you do what you want. And he just wanted a little more freedom. And so he uh, made the jump over to lease. But anyway, um, I've got some really good stuff coming up next week. Um, we're going to have to talk a little bit more about the company I worked for before. You might notice... I mentioned them earlier in this video, but I did not mention them by name. I am no longer endorsing that previous company, and I'm going to do my best not to speak their name in my videos unless something newsworthy happens where I have to, like they get bought out, go out of business, something like that. If there's a news article about them, lawsuit, something like that, I'll talk about them. But I'm no longer recommending them, no longer endorsing them. Um, after I left there, the gloves have come off and some really nasty things have happened. And we're going to talk about that next week. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to wrap this up. I've got to edit this and get it on there. So hopefully you guys will see it before you go home for the weekend. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.